Good evening. Barely three months before the ruling party holds its delegates' conference, it appears that things are no longer teased. With controversy over the ruling party register, there fears that there is barely enough time to carry out a fresh exercise. The likelihood that former Premier Mama Mbabazi could seek the flag bearer position could dent a blow to the Chankwanzi resolution and portray the NRM as a party which brooks no internal competition. On the spot night is the Secretary General Justin Kasule Lumumba, who replaced Amama Mbawazi, who was ejected from the coveted seat. <music> Madam Secretary General, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you, Patrick. It is the first time I'm hosting you as Secretary General, but let me start from there. There are suggestions that you were rewarded with this coveted position of Secretary General of the NRM party uh, with all respect because you are less ambitious than the Honorable John Patrick Amamambabazi. Your take. I'm so surprised. What was the reward for? You worked as Chief Whip. You brought in Bujiri. You are a mobilizer in Busoga. So they reward you with a bigger position. I don't but you also have a glass ceiling. I don't think it is. Uh, it was a reward. I think it is because at the, at at this time, God had planned that it would be me. So it was God's plan. Because if it is to work, there are so many people in NRM who have worked. If it is to to do with being a a, a a woman, there are so many women in NRM and in this country. If it is to to be a member of parliament. There are very many members of parliament. So I think it was just God's plan that it will be me to be at this time. But how about those who say because Justin Kasule Lumumba is less ambitious, probably she's not looking at the presidency. I don't think being ambitious is only about looking at the presidency. I think it's about, let's look at it in terms of serving. Because when you say Justin Lumumba is not looking at the presidency be, or being ambitious, who, is, who, who, who has uh, the, the, the machine that measures? So do you have presidential ambitions? As of now, I don't have. This is it? I don't have now. I, Honorable, I've seen you come to the conference center here at the Serena where we are. Yeah. And I saw <laughs> the, the convoy. Perhaps your appointment has held at a new era. An era where you are chauffeured in the latest Land Cruiser, brand new, what they call them, Penconi. <laughs> but some people say you flout some kind of opulence when your supporters around Uganda are wallowing in poverty. Look here. As uh, one, NRM is the, power, the, the ruling party. It is. And the people who are in the government are deployed by the party. The, the, the programs they are implementing, the manifesto, the manifesto they are implementing is a manifesto of a party called NRM. So it's that very manifesto, those promises, the contract between the ruling party NRM and the Ugandans, that, that was made the government programs, which people in government are implementing. So what I want you to know is that the president President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni is deployed by the party called the NRM. All the leaders you are seeing, both political and civil servants, are doing work on behalf of NRM party. So who is supposed to monitor their work? Who is the owner of that manifesto? It is NRM. And it's the secretariat, headed by the secretary general, in charge of managing the affairs of the party especially in, admi or in, in terms of administration. So the people who are in the government are deployed by the party. And the secretariat is that the, the, the administrative unity of the ruling party. So the secretary general in protocol actually should have been much higher than where it has been placed by the president. Because the president has placed it below the prime minister. But it should have even been much higher. Because the prime minister 
is the one responsible or in charge of supervising all the ministries that are implementing the NRM manifesto. So the Prime Minister is answerable to the party. Am I clear? Yes, you are. You're so, trying to explain to in me. In other that words, I'm telling you that is the, 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 the secretariat is the face of the ruling party. And the people in the government are deployed by the ruling party and implementing the, the manifesto of the ruling party. So you are, what you're saying that all these opulence we see, the chauffeur, so land cruisers, of, uh, the, and, and, and the 4 by 4s and the, and the police escorts, you, all that is deserving because of the nature of the job. It is deserving, one, because the secretariat has to get in touch with government, has to look at service delivery, and has to go and mobilize the members of the party. And even mobilize the non-members of the party to encourage them to join the party called NRM. So when the, the, the secretariat goes out to do mobilization, the people in, in Kabong are waiting for the secretary general and the people in Kisoro are waiting for the secretary general. The people in Kampala are waiting for the secretary general. The people in Arua are waiting. All the, the secretariat has to be felt by its members in all the branches. In NRM, the branches are, 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 are the villages. So, our responsibility is to make sure our manifesto is implemented properly. So, where you say people are wallowing in poverty, it is the responsibility of us, the secretariat, to make sure government programs that are implemented by the people in the government, they do our work very well. And it is us to, to monitor and be sure they are doing the work on behalf of the party. Because at the end of the day, the voters didn't vote government. The voters voted the party. So when the party goes back to the voters, the party will be answerable to the voters. It will not be government answerable to the voters. So it is the party to, to make government accountable. That's a big responsibility. And you, you have to move. So you are expected as secretariat to do the administration, to sit in office, but at the same time be in the, uh, in the countryside. And then this era of having a secretary general seated in the office in the Kampala is over. The voters want to talk to, to, to the people. They give the responsibility. We have seen a secretary general who has not as moved with, like you have done and stayed in office, maybe in Kampala, but he has won. I mean, it is a, a, a good return on the investment. He's won the presidency for you. He's won the parliament for you. He's won the regions of Uganda for you as NRM. The dynamics have changed. The dynamics in politics have changed. And if you observe... The, the temperature of the politics of this election is going to be much higher than the temperature before. Why is that? Just observe. But why is it? Have you ever seen the opposition pushing so much for electoral reforms like they've done this time? Do you, Ugandans deserve electoral reforms, don't they? We need to improve what, from what where we you, are now, what do you intend the way to we have been improving. Because but if, if you, you need to improve Honorable Justin Kasule, you don't bring the kind of a bill that you have brought to, to, to Parliament. Because that bill, most Ugandans are saying, is so wanting. Let them bring proposals to improve it. You know one thing I've realized is that it, for when people bring proposals and they bring ten proposals and six are accepted, when the four are not accepted, they even don't look at what has been accepted. You know, it's like uh, the way my brothers uh, behave, the taxi drivers. When he, he's driving a taxi, you know that is an area where women are coming, to, to, to the industry where women also are coming to, and I will really support women too. When there are people in the, in the vehicle, even if they are 10, they will still look for the, the more two. So that he feels, so he drives like this in the car because they're already in their hands. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. 
pays more attention to those who are outside. So, uh, my brothers who are pushing for this, let's look at uh, what do they really want and what has not been included and what has been included in the proposals. Well, according to them, and what I've seen, everything has not been included. But even then, let's also... What, okay, what no, do no, you... No, 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 Patrick, let's we go just had Patrick, a, We just had a debate on the electoral reforms with the Minister of Justice and Constitutional Affairs last week. Mm. Uh, but now, so I don't want to repeat that. No, but we, even we, then, since you have said about it, mm -hmm. when they bring a proposal to government, and the government, the executive has not included it, it's not all lost. There is another opening. Because if they take their proposals to the ministry and the ministry does not consider their proposals to go through the executive and get to parliament, they, they can go to the committee. They can go to the committee of legal and parliamentary affairs and present their proposals. If you, Actually, use, like if you today, use the analogy of football in the elections, you cannot have a member of a team playing the same team to be able to choose the referee and, and referee the game. This is what they are saying. So they are saying, if you want the Electoral Commission, let them apply. And let them be public interviews. Let the best be selected and sent to Parliament. Let the, the President only come in to give them instruments of power. That they are now the Commissioners. And not but, the other way around. Let... They want to take away the powers of, the, of, of appointing Commissioners from the Presidency. And this new bill does not say that. Now let me ask you. Who are they proposing to be appointing the board or the commission that will be interviewing those people? They are proposing Judicial Service Commission. Yes. But who appoints the Judicial Service Commission? It is the president. So what changes are they making? It is the president who appoints the members of the Judicial Service Commission. And they are proposing that let the Judicial Service Commission be the one to appoint the members of the the Electoral Commission. So what is the difference? They will apply. It will still be within the powers of the Individuals president. Individuals interested will apply. And then there will be public interviews. You know, there, there's some kind of gatekeeping on who comes in at the end of the day. But the, uh, applying to who? Still to the Judicial Service Commission. Yes. Appointed by the president. Because even if, the, even the, the status quo, even if people don't apply, those who are nominated by the president have the freedom to but, say no. But, but, but you are forgetting that the other day when the president nominated again the former chief justice, the Judicial Service Commission had given names. It stood with the ground and said, this, these are the names we want. From here you can choose a chief justice. The, the Judicial Service Commission prevail, prevailed. Yeah, the, president, the president had a different idea and a different choice. So yeah. there's, already, there's already a record of balance but it of is, power. But it is not the Judicial Service Commission that refused. It is the courts when one of the members from the public went to court. It was not the Judicial Service Commission. Yes, I'm not their spokesperson. They stood their ground. But when the president nominated... One member but went you to can court. See, it's what you can, stopped that you can process. See, you can see the independence. So this is what they want. That if that is what is going to bring some kind of balance and fairness, let it be honorable. But what do you intend to accomplish as Secretary General in the short, in the short term? Because there seems to be lack of cohesion in your party ahead of 2016. What will Justin Lumumba do? For me as Secretary General of NRM, my work is to, as of now, is to make sure I get a register for NRM. Because what is, you can't be a secretary general when you don't know your strength. You don't know you, your, how strong your party is. And that is determined by membership to begin with. So as of now, we don't have a, a, a register. We need a register to determine our strength as a party. And as we determine our strength, it is around that that we, we, shall, we shall devise our strategies 
to take on 2016. So where is and the, it's where, after where, we have the so register. All this time around, you've never no, had no, a no, register? No, 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 Mr. Kamara. You know it very well. That there is no way we would have said we are going for mass registration and recruitment if we had a register. If we had a register, we would have gone to update. But we have nothing to update. So what happened to your register? We don't have it. That's why when we're having elections in our primaries, they would say every member of NRM of that village should vote. And that's why we had some challenges in I've, primaries. I've heard party members say that, claim that the former Secretary General, Honorable Obama Bowser, has the register, which he denies. What does he say? But you've said, I've heard your members say the former Secretary General has the register. Is that true? I've, I don't know. Because we have really called for anybody who has the register to bring it, and nobody has brought it. When so I was you... government chief whip, at least... About three times, the chairman of NRM asked the secretary general to bring the register and never brought it. How we can, set up a, a select document, committee. We how can a party document so vital be in the hands of an individual, just an individual? And you can't even find copies anywhere else. This is a mass party, has been in power for 25 years or 30 now. How can that even happen? That is a question that you do ask that very individual. Because I don't know what the motive was or is. So I can't answer for the individual. I don't know the, mot the motive behind it. So uh, it's as if you're beginning the pattern now or today? True. Because we don't have any, any, any record of membership. Because we all have membership cards. But all of those who have membership cards, there is no record that we have a register here. And that's why when we, start, we launched the mass registration and the recruitment, it was the chairman who first registered. So we are doing it because we, we want to have information. We want to have data. We don't have it. Honorable Justin, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I just want to know, is there enough time to complete a voter's register before the delegates conference will be right back. Always wants what's best for us. That's why she uses new geisha with extracts from nature that make it gentle enough to use for the whole family. New geisha with extracts from mother nature. Mutawani, next time you should visit for longer. So for you, Mom, I'll find a way to be there more. Mm. Okay, yeah. Mama. On the largest 3G network, your loved ones are always closer. Get the Airtel smartphone or the Airtel Red smartphone today. Airtel. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest tonight is the Secretary General of the NRM Party, Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba. You, you are going around to, have a, to make a new register, but will you have enough time to complete this register before the... NRM Delegates Conference, which I'm told is about three, four months' time. By, by the middle of June, we shall have the register. Because when you look at our roadmap, we are supposed to compile, and by the 12th of July, have the register ready. So, registration, we started in northern Uganda, and we are now compiling. We, have, uh, we, 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 are, we, we are already transporting computers, four laptops per district so that they enter the data at the district. Then we are beginning registration in central Uganda tomorrow. Then those, after, uh, next week we are moving to, to western. Then the other week we move to eastern. So that means 
within the next three weeks, we shall have the data entered. Then after the, we've entered the data, we are going to compile a register that we, we are taking back to every village for display. Then we produce a final register by the 12th of July, which as Secretary General, I will hand over to the, the, to the NRM Electoral Commission, headed by Professor Tango Doi. And then we go into elections of internal structures. That should take us up to mid-August. Election of internal structures will be from, from 13th of July to the mid of August. Then after the internal structures, we shall go for primaries. Primaries are going to be held in September. After primaries, we go for the, na for, for the national conference in October. So you, but, but you seem to be registering people in a hurriedly manner, and that could cause you problems in the future, if, no, no. especially when people lose the, in the polls. No, no, no. We, registration, we are doing the mass registration for seven days in a, a, a region. We compile the data. Registration is continuous, supposed to be continuous, but we shall have to have a cutoff in, in July purposely for, election, for, election, for elections of uh, internal structures and primaries. So it's continuous. That's why registration is on, but universities are having exams. We would want also those ones to be registered. For those, so we are going to wait for, for them the after exams. people in northern Uganda, the, the, I mean, those who have been there, we haven't seen the queues of the NRM members going to register. At least we saw the queues of the Kigundu uh, Electoral Commission members, people trying to register in the national ID. But your NRM queues uh, uh, have not been seen in northern Uganda. You say you didn't see, but for us we saw, and others saw. So if you want... I'm going to show you here in Central. I'm going to show you here in Central. But the queues were there. Actually, we were overwhelmed. The number of cards who had prepared to make for Northern Uganda were overwhelmed. They came for more cards. It appears honorable that whereas the former premier was sacked, his image continues to hover over the party. That whenever he sneezes, the party catches a cold. <laughs> He's, first of all, he's a senior member of NRM, and he's a senior leader in this country. And he has served for quite some time. So don't expect them, don't, we don't expect him to, to disappear in a second. He did good work for this country. So when he sneezes, we don't catch a cold, but we not see his presence. There's some kind of fear that he puts you on panic, he doesn't he? Which panic is that, does he put us on? By the way, one thing I want you to know, that there is nothing he's making us panic about. If we survived the tsunami, if we survived the hammer, what is he naming himself within NRM? And yet those who are outside NRM. But for him, he's within NRM. So that means he's a member of NRM. He's actually giving more publicity to NRM. The it appears even though he appended his signature on the Chiangkwanza resolution, many on the streets of Kampala think the NRM is scared of competition. You'd rather have a Vix Kingo in the competition than Honorable Patrick Amama Mbabazi. First of all, the Chiangkwanza resolution was, is a resolution of the caucus to which he signed 202. He did. He did. Under no duress. And he's a lawyer. And he knows all the legal implications. And he knows the rules governing the NRM constitution. The rules that, not the constitution, the NRM caucus, the rules, the rules of procedure for the NRM parliamentary caucus were handed over to me as a government chief whip at that time by the secretary general of NRM of that time, Honorable Mama Mbavas. And those are the rules of procedure that are used in the NRM parliamentary caucus. So he knows the rules. He, the moment the majority have agreed, they take the day. And that's how we have been operating for all the time when he has been Secretary General, doing his work, doing work in parliament on his behalf. And at the same time, at a time when he was lead of government business, those are the rules we are following. When he would bring proposals to the caucus, 
and the majority take a decision, that's the decision we carry on the floor of parliament. So that's how we operate. So he shouldn't think that the rules only work when he's a secretary general, when he's a leader of government business in parliament, and when he leaves, the rules change. But, Honorable, it is true and very evident that we see some kind of party paranoia when Honorable John Patrick Mambabazi, you know, has some indication that he ran for, for the presidency than if it was uh, Vix Kingo or Captain Hinda Maguru. Even Patrick Kamara, you can come and contest. Of course I can. But well, anyway, <laughs> what, what the members of parliament, what was done the, the, in the, in the res, what, what is in the resolution is f an expression by the members of the NRM parliamentary caucus. And remember, when they went down to the when they went down to the sub counties, they also brought a feedback. So, at, but at the end of the day, it is the national conference of October that has the final say. So, all these are political expressions by the different individuals, by different caucuses, by different members of NRM or teams within NRM, but the final say is by the National Conference. We've, we've just heard one group of people saying, if you're a member of the NRM, you're a member of NRM for life. And the other day you're telling independents to, to go out. In fact, you alienated them more. We expected the Secretary General would be bringing them in, but you're sort of sending them away. And yet, at least I've heard the, the former Prime Minister talk, if you're an NRM, like you have just said, he's a lawyer and he understands the law. You're an NRM for life. What is, what is the truth? But, uh, Patrick, we've seen people lose seats because their actions are perceived to tantamounting to crossing the floor. Let me give you an example. You remember when you were in last parliament, there are members who are in parliament in different shades, and decided to, be, to go and be nominated in other parties or as independents or in different political sheds. They lost their seats. That was one lesson. Secondly, when we were in Changkwans in the caucus retreat of 2012, the MOP called Joseph Kenneth Chinji Bosa is an independent came with other independents and participated in our retreat. And then was taken to court by Mustafa Semugeni. That he had the, his, his participation in the Changkwan's retreat of the NRM Parliamentary Caucus was tantamount to crossing the floor. So he, since he's an independent, he had crossed the floor, he should lose his seat. The, in the ruling by Justice Kasule, he stated that changes attending the NRM activities does not that amount to crossing the floor. Because he was associating, he was relating, but not belonging. So for an independent member of parliament, an independent member in the council, district council or sub-county council, to go and register in NRM now, that is the activity of registration is belonging. We are registering people to belong to NRM, not to associate with NRM and not to relate with NRM, but to belong to NRM. So for an independent member as of now to go and register with NRM, that can be used in courts of law and one can lose a seat. So it is being honest very honest to people and telling them the truth that please we want you but we don't want to cause you problems so i would really request ugandans let's be honest so let's not talk for if, the sake of members, talking members, let's be honest if members decided to cross the nrm mm. and, and and maybe they lost their seat is it that add value to you that you have individuals have come to you because these are people who understand they are taking a choice why would that worry you to say, please watch out? I want somebody to do it when he has been told of the implications. After By me who wants the person. Not somebody to do something, then he blames me for having not told him. Do you her. want members in your party or you don't want other members to lose their seats? 
I want members in NRM. Then why don't you but like I was, no, I have to, to, to inform them. So they are free to come and I welcome them. Just to enter the party, you only need to go to your village chairman and apply there. And that's all. That, that, so it is as simple as that. It's as simple as that. But as I've told you, for the leaders, people who are in the in parliament or in the, in the districts, they should know the legal implications. And it's my responsibility as a leader to inform them. How will you deal with Honorable Mbabas in case he contests as an independent or within the opposition? First of all, for me as the Secretary General, Secretariat, we are welcoming to everybody, whether a member of NRM or not. Secondly, when the time comes for us to have primaries at whatever level, guidelines are going to be brought out. We shall bring out the guidelines and the nominations will be, will be open to whoever qualifies, whoever meets the requirements. It will be open. So, Honorable Mama Mbabazi, whatever post he wants to contest for, it will be open. I only urge him to go and register. Including the flag bearer. So that we have him. Including the flag bearer. We don't have a flag bearer yet. So if he contests for the flag bearer. Yeah. If he, he, he will come and contest if he's interested. And we have promised Ugandans we shall be fair to all. But yet you belong to a caucus that has ring fisted it to one individual. But by then I was not a secretary general. I'm now the secretary general. By then I was the government chief whip. So and by you, the way, according when to the, you, the Chankwan's resolution is null and void? Let me tell you, according to me as a secretary general, that was an expression by the Chankwan's, by the caucus of NRM. By the way to which I belong. But I'm the secretary general, so I'm for all. Those who belong to the caucus and those who don't belong to the caucus. So, but even when we're in Chankwan's, as a government chief whip, when this resolution was, when people were moving the motion, I could not sign because I was the government chief whip, the chairperson of the caucus. It is after the resolution had passed that I signed and took this resolution to SEC, Central Executive Committee. And by the way, when I say I took it, I handed, out, I handed it over to the Secretary General of NRM then, Honorable Mama Mbabas, in a caucus meeting. And he has the originals of that resolution. Honorable Justin, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we look at the events happening in the region, including Burundi. How will Uganda respond? If you want to play dirty, I'm more than happy to oblige. It's all systems go. Please don't hurt him. You hurt him yourself. I can see why through you, even though Umanga lives in my blood's account. Is that what's going to happen to our daughter, Dad? Is she going to die? You know this lady. Hi, yes, um, Mr. Chibedi. Um, I have a tip off. Fury. I'm here. You're also scared to say what you know. The noose is tightening round our necks. Let's find a way to loosen it. Scandal. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is the Secretary General of the NRM Party, Justin Kasule Lumumba. I have seen members of your party, especially the young people. In fact, nowadays Ugandans have reached a level because I don't know whether they have been pushed the wall so much. They are coalescing around issues that cause misery. They are calling themselves the NRM poor youth, jobless Ugandans. Now, how, how do you respond to these poor Ugand youth who are now even getting into caucuses, if I may, in the different districts of Uganda? One, it's unfortunate that uh, 
some people have started celebrating about uh, their misery or the misery of others. Because not all those who call themselves poor youth are poor. We've seen some of them driving expensive vehicles with personalized numbers. But because they, they are heading poor youth, poor youth, you can't even know how they are raising even money to, build, to buy those expensive vehicles. But still, we have a challenge as a country, the challenge of unemployment. They liberalized education in this, the education sector was liberalized. Universities, we have private, un, privately owned universities and government owned universities, but the, the, the graduates from these universities, first of all, there is not enough space for them to be absorbed in the civil service. And also, there is not enough space to be absorbed in the private sector. Yesterday, the Daily Monitor reported 32,000 vacancies in, 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 gov in government offices. It's even more than that, because when I even read the article, they, don't, they didn't include all districts. And not, they didn't include all parastatals. But they didn't, so, it's because... And the young people who are unemployed. Yeah, it is and true. And they're skilled and educated here in Uganda. It is true, but then you also have to look at... Uh, the wage bill, because when you look at the, 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 the money spent on, issue, on salaries and the allowances, so, so much. Because when you look at the national budget, I think it has shot over 30 percent. But if you cut the deal. hemorrhage in corruption and plug all the loopholes, about 900 billion is lost through corruption almost every year. That's a lot of money to pay to go around. That, that you are very true. That you, you are very true on that. But uh, it is part of my work as a Secretary General to make sure our manifesto is implemented in the right way. Part of it is to fight corruption. But also to look at how much money goes in what is not important in government. Because when you look at what, what is in our budget, and when you look at, say, if a project is designed, you see there is a lot of money wasted in what is not so important. And yet, much of that money should have gone to the ordinary person. So it is part of our work. And it's the responsibility of all of us, whether NRM or not, to fight corruption. Corruption has eaten us up. All of us. That I we, both sides, by the way. When I talk of both sides, is that both government and even the opposition. We have, there are also stories to, to that. So the issue of corruption is, should be a battle for all of us. Yes, but for, you, of for, but, but more for you, because you are in leadership, the, gov the people of Uganda entrusted you to lead them, and so you have a responsibility. But it affects everybody. To lead them well. But it affects everybody. So even the person in opposition, who has a good idea, should bring it up. Because if one brings up a good idea, it serves the, the, the Ugandan now so that the, whatever time they take power as opposition, they will find this Ugandan alive. So yes, we have the responsibility, but that does not stop when with you, us When only. you talk of the wage bill, and there are other areas where you could have cut. For example, we have, we have the biggest parliament, maybe south of the Sahara. You have the biggest cabinet in the world. You have the highest number of presidential advisors that never even give advice or they never even meet the president. You have all these RDCs and their deputies and, and what. Yet you, you still say you have a huge wage bill. What has been happening on the side of the party is that you will find the people who are in charge, the people who are in the leadership of the party especially the secretariat, are the implementers of the manifesto. So you would find, because you can't wake up and criticize yourself. It is human. So it is now as NRM, we have now the secretariat. And it has full-time staff. That's part of our work. That's part of our work to say, please, you in the government, look here. You have all of this huge team of people. I'm not pointing a finger at anybody now, 
because we've not really calculated and done a research, we don't see their productivity vis-a-vis -vis money spent. It would less channel this money into this. But also... Is that the kind of fight you're prepared to take? Yes. Very ready. Because Ugandans are watching us. What do we have to add? What value do we have to add? It's not about being driven in big vehicles, Is that, that the kind sitting of fight at plot that 10. should have been but, fought yesterday? No, but we've just come to office. I've been a government chief whip. That means I've been part of the implementers. Now I'm decide to monitor those who are implementing and tell them, please, this is not the right thing. We would have done it better this way. I'm going to That's the difference. I'm going to open the lines and so that we can have Ugandans who are watching this program tonight be able to ask questions or make comments and maybe agree with you or disagree on whatever they have. So this is the moment when you can engage the Honorable Justin Kasule Lumumba. So let me take the very first caller online. Hello. 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 How are you doing, Kamara? I'm fine, thank you, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? No, Fred, calling from Namataba. Namataba. How are you doing, Kamara? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, um, now, um, I want to pose a question to the SG. Okay. Uh, truthfully, uh, I really have one problem. Uh, the people who are eating the man of this nation walk scot free on the streets. And there she comes, tells this nation that the government has the will to fight corruption. You are telling us that the people in opposition, please do a hand. When? Just three, two, three, four days ago, they've been traversing this country, hunting for views of the people to review the constitution in the way how the election of this nation should be really handled. To the surface of this nation, all the things that the Ugandans raised on these issues, the government came back with none of them, they came back with other things. So really, Kamara, let the Secretary General tell this nation that the government has failed and we don't have the will to lead this nation anymore. Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me just take one more call, and if I pick you, if you hear an echo, please continue talking. Don't listen to yourself, just in case if you have left your uh, TV volume high. But I uh, you, please, you turn down the volume, then we can have a very Hello. good conversation. Hello. Hello, I'm Kansa Ramasika James from Bududa. From Bududa, James in Bududa. Yes. You're on air, yeah, sir. Yeah, Kansa Ramasika James, this is part of the disabilities. Mm -hmm. Emma. Yes, sir. That's I want to ask you the Secretary General that is. If you talk of uh, the independent and then the opposition, when they get uh, with the NRM, uh, definitely they lose their seat. What do you ask the is? And if you give to those people, because we need them as a party, because we are the strong NRM supporters. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jameson Bududa. Let me just take one more now. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes, hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Um, good Benjamin, calling from Kisasi. Benjamin in Kisasi, you're on air, sir. Yeah, um, I greet you very much, Kamara. Yes, sir. Um, yes, now I greet you, Honevo. It's actually it's PG. Um, and my point is. Secretary General, my point is, Madam, you do your work. We want to work, we support you. Don't don't listen to yourself. Continue talking, sir. All right. Anyway, he was giving a word of support, which you have made your point, uh, uh, Benjamin in Kisasi. Let me take another caller. Hello. Hello. Good evening, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Oh, good evening, Mr. Kamara. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yes, I'm, I'm calling from Mbiko here. Mbiko. Yes. And your name? 
My name is Paul Tilini. Paul Tilini, you're on air. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Kamara. You're welcome. Yes, I, I, would, I would like to thank uh, Madam Secretary General mm -hmm. yeah, for being very calm mm -hmm. as she expresses the views of uh, NRM and of uh, the whole country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I pray for her to continue doing the good work. Okay. All right. You've you made your point, sir. Uh, our friend from Mbiko. Okay. Um, well, there are quite a number of people who are trying to get to us, but because of time, I cannot take all the calls. Well, there are a lot of kudos there, and then one person needs to know how you're going to deal with independence. They need them. You need them. Patrick, me, I would even be happy to get more questions from people mm -hmm. because at least people are listening. But uh, the issue of independence, how we can help them, there is a constitutional amendment proposed the amendment by the independents themselves before parliament. The, their proposal is that they should be, those who come to parliament when they are independents, their, the, their proposal is that they should be allowed to participate in activities on, of a political party, maybe for the next term, like they were proposing a year. It came down to some six months before we go into the next elections. And uh, there are those who are proposing, let it not be for only independents. It should be for all. So that there are those who are in uh, FDC who would want to be in NRM next, uh, next term. That's a joke. You so know. they that's should. A joke, you know. <laughs> I knew you would comment. <laughs> that's why. So they want to be allowed to be given space that if you are in parliament, either in a political party or an independent, six months. To the election to, to to the general elections you could be allowed to participate in activities of another party or as an independent activities of a party these are proposals this is the only way we can we can secure the issue of having independence participate in activities of political parties or people who are in other parties and want to change parties or cross they they can participate but the question has always been if you enter the parliament and you are on the NRM ticket, and the next parliament you want to be an independent, so how are you going to separate the two? The, the same person in the same skin in the parliament now in another party, then you, you are participating outside the principles of parliament in the activities of another party, then when you come, you again do the way the NRMs do. There is also a bit of a problem. But at the same time, how do we entrench the practice of multi-party dispensation? Because when you have people in parliament, somebody, an individual in parliament in another, on another party ticket, then he goes out to, 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 to do activities of another party outside, outside the principles of parliament, are we entrenching the practice of multi-party? That has been a question. Okay. But all I pray is that Mem the parliament should take a decision on this matter because as they do that they they should consider the 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 practice of multi party but at the same time not infringe on human rights I just of want the to individuals give you to show that the ground is so uneven honorable justin i just want to give you a case today a former party president goes to nsambia sharing hall to meet people and have a meeting there. And police is deployed. He's denied entry there. And he's stowed away in his car using an armored personnel carrier, an APC, towards Ginger Road. I'm talking about the events that happened in Zambia uh, that involved Dr. Kiza Besije. It's unfair. Patrick, I don't want to say it's unfair or fair because I watched any TV news. And the police officer was explaining that they didn't get permission. We have the Public Order Management Act, which was passed by this same parliament. So did they follow those guidelines? So I don't want to blame them. I don't want to blame police because I don't know exactly what happened. Because I saw the policeman saying they didn't follow the procedures. They didn't write to police. But also, allow me to answer this question. 
where somebody said from Nama, na, Namataba that uh, people go to court, they corrupt, they are left free. People go solicit ideas from the, od the ordinary people about electoral reforms. When they come, the executive does not include them in the uh, proposed amendments. So he says that NRM should, say, should, allow, should accept that they failed to lead Uganda. This can't be. Because even when you talk of electoral reforms, I want this person from Namataba to know that in 1980, we had two belt boxes which were opaque. And all that was there was a sticker. There was a belt box for DP. There was a belt box for UPC. So when they would detect which belt box has more more belt papers, they would just change the stickers. But for us, we have transparent belt boxes today. Secondly, when we started in 1996, you would go in a black cavera to cover yourself there and vote. These days, it is in the open, in the basin when everybody is seeing. So things have gone improving. Okay. But the issue is we can improve better. Oh, oh. And when we talk of electoral reforms, it's not all that Ugandans need. Ugandans need peace. NRM should be praised under the leadership of President Museveni. At least for having brought our peace our to this country. And our the whole of Uganda, not partially, but the whole of Uganda, just including us, Karamoja just give us and the part, neighbors to give Karamoja. Give us your parting shot tonight. Your concluding remark on this show. I want to thank those who have listened to us, but I want to inform the people in central Uganda that please registration of NRM members begins tomorrow and it will be on for seven days that is the massive one then we shall continue with the continuous I, I think registration my my should, be, should make, make a bill for me <laughs> bill for you. so i want to advise members of the opposition those who are not satisfied with the electoral reforms that have been brought by the executive it is not all closed go to the legal and parliamentary affairs committee because they've opened up public hearing Today they waited for parties and they had Uganda Law, I think Law Reform Commission. They went and made their proposals. They waited for parties, nobody went. So even if the executive has not brought your proposals, you still have another opening. Go to the committee and put your proposals to the committee. Then also secondly, even a backbencher, even somebody the, in the opposition the is that can you bring, brought, can you bring, can you bring is that an what, amendment? What the cabinet brought was so hollow that they have nothing to add to. That that one should just be uh, done with and they start afresh because there's nothing to build on to. There's no. Foundation. But there is nothing that they are going to do that will not go through parliament. So if whatever they've been doing, whether the the the, the opposition. Whether the executive, they all have to go through parliament. Thank so you. let them go to parliament Thank and take their proposals. Thank you. If there is still an opening. Patrick, even this, let me give information to them. The, even these amendments, any member of parliament can bring an amendment to parliament. And if, if it has no financial implication, even a constitutional amendment, they can bring it. Because we, what they are talking of, having... A team, uh, the electoral commission officials or leaders or commissioners appointed by a judicial service commission has no financial implication. Those uh, where they are talking of reinstating term limits has no financial implication. So their proposals actually don't have financial implications that they can even be brought by a backer bencher in the parliament. So they should not lose, uh, they should not give up, they should continue but use all the available channels. And I want to thank those people who made the thank constitution. You. There she goes. You've heard her, the illustrious daughter of Uganda and of course of the NRM party, voting, who is pitching in for her party and uh, she's leading the party now as Secretary General. Maybe you'll be meeting as she crisscrosses the country in her new Mpenkoni. Nowadays they call them the Mpenkoni. The I've just heard that from you. <laughs> then brand new land cruisers. Mm -hmm. And thank you for being a part of this. Mm -hmm. Good night and God bless Uganda. Thank <laughs> you.